Okay, so uh, here we go. We're going to start the build. Let's see how far we get. Um, can't wait to uh, get stuck into this. So let's get bag one and the chassis. front and a back to these. There's um, a little recess at the back here to stop the uh, hinge pin uh, holder from pushing all the way through. So since the hinge pin's going that way, that's going to go towards the back of the chassis. One coffee. Step two, we need bag two. <clears throat> I'm going to start with a steering rack. meant to be or not but that's the way it is right now so ah okay it looks like these little inserts or these spaces are cams they're eccentric so we need to adjust spin these to the right place to take the slop out ha huh. So the plan, I think, is get these two with a little dot, which is really hard to see. I don't think you're going to be able to make that out. There's a tiny little key mark there. That's pointing there. Put that one the same way, pointing here. And then we use this one to actually put tension on it. And by... Um, putting these two in the same spot 
and uh, using that one to tension it, it means that we've got even tension on that side and that side, and that one's the, the counterbalance in the middle. That's beautiful. All right, that is a uh, super slick. So then we go to bag three, which is actually, let's get a sip of coffee first. weight oil and we've got some thick uh, black grease oh, looks like they've already uh, there's already black grease in here so it looks like they've already put the black grease there where they wanted to put on the out drive there just to uh, seal it up a little bit and uh, get even pressure around the whole diff so we don't warp it. There we go. That's uh, very nice. Okay, that's the diff. Then we go to bag four. Starting to get to the meaty bits. Basically, the four screws it says to go here. There's um, this is slotted, so you can actually change the angle of this so that it's more towards the back or more forward of the back axle. Um, the default setting out of the box is uh, all the way to the back, so most of the weight is as close to the back axle as possible from the motor. Um, then we just uh, put the rest of the screws in. And the discrete steps of adjustment are based on the little dimples in here. So each one of those is a screw hole or screw position. So we can rotate that forward by those screw increments. I'm sure this is more than strong enough, but uh, 
there's not a lot of meat around between these holes so potentially in a big hit that'll deform and you can break a spur um, I reckon uh, there's potential to get a carbon fiber reinforcement plate there as well uh, if for no reason other than bling We've got uh, the motor here that's going to go into it, a nice or similar red to what's in there. So I'll just mount that in there. Uh, let's have a quick squiz, see what the motor looks like, uh, what orientation. So orientation is that way, so motor-wise come out from underneath. It's nice we've got the grub screw there for this. Uh, so I'll leave that there. So next step, let's get back on track. Bag six. This has got some beautiful little uh, red anodized bits. How good is that? So, there we go. Look at the machining on that. It's very impressive. Feels quite light too. They gave you a... given that this piece is a fixed width so that's not going to be able to change and it's locked to this screw hole here I wonder why they made this a slot so that's going to be screwed into here it's been going to be connected to this slot but this is a fixed length so why does it need to have a slot there unless this chassis was also for uh, something that had a plastic or adjustable uh, servo mount or lay down servo maybe hmm. yeah so you can see it from the bottom there we've got uh, just so you've got an adjustable slot there to, that would imply you could move things around a little bit, but uh, that's locked to there. It's aluminium, it's solid aluminium, so it ain't going anywhere there. Thank <laughs> you. 
that the, this piece has got two slightly different sides. There's a square part at the bottom here and then there's an angle bit there. <coughs> so I'll do that. Yeah, and it uh, makes sense because we've got the uh, shiny alloy bit at the top. Yeah, and it's sitting much flusher now. That makes more sense. Always pays to double check the manual. see but one side of the turnbuckle there has a higher um, or the actual bit where the pivot ball goes is slightly offset of center normally most turnbuckles tend to be centered um, these particular ones the long ones are slightly offset there you go you need to pay attention to that otherwise it'll end up kinked that's not necessarily a good thing So I like these turnbuckles have a little notch on one end of the hex bit, a bit hard to see. I can just make it out there. There's a little notch here. I like to put all of those to the same direction. So when you make an adjustment, you can always turn it one way to shorten it and turn the other way to expand. And if you do that on all of them, when you're looking at the car head on, um, it, you don't have to keep thinking of which ways it to expand or contract and yeah, it just makes it a bit easier to deal with. So I go to bag seven. Um, They're the upper collars, they're the 
lower collars they're slightly bigger diameter all right so in order to put these in let's move these out of the way for a second so we need to go here and we need to insert those all right so there are four holes where these can be inserted here uh, where are we here and it's the upper row and towards the inside of the bulkhead so that one is where the hinge pin is going to go and that then goes through to the matching one at the back there okay So there's a flat part on these pieces and that goes towards where the grub screw is on here. And according to the manual, um, that flat part is where the biggest offset is on the on this piece. So the flat part's there and there's the biggest offset so that uh, the actual pivot ball is slightly offset of center away from the flat and that's that goes that way and then we can move that in and out uh, where we need to Eight, eight. There we go. We've got some wheel hexes, some other misc bits. here to be to be able to mount the pivot ball uh, the manual calls for using the one closest to the hub or the center of the hub so not the f outmost one the innermost hole um,
that's uh, quite a bit of lock there quite a bit hmm the roller so we're on page 17 at the moment next one is shocks and we might do that in the next session wrap it up that sounds pretty good So yeah, um, we just need to um, get the shocks on now, upper deck, um, the rear diffuser and the bumper, mount the ESC, battery holders and uh, put a receiver in and put the gyro in as well. So we'll uh, do all of that next time. And uh, yeah, see how we go. All right, until then. <laughs>